Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is a morning market prep video for July 13th, 2022. Well, all of the waiting may finally be over. Um, all of this choppy price action and this log jam that we have seen for the last couple of weeks on low volume might finally come to an end because this morning we get our reading on CPI and tomorrow we begin the um, first part of earnings for the third quarter with the big banks kicking things off on Thursday morning. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about what we might want to be doing for today. Let's take a look here. Now, yesterday, doggone it, we had that right at the beginning of the morning, we saw markets shoot up. If I go to a 15-minute chart, uh, markets open, we completely reversed that day and i cautioned everyone in right way options to be very very careful jumping into that because i suspected it was nothing more than an engineered move um, so the institutions had somebody to sell to to lay off the risk and that eventually turned out to be correct with that reversal at the end of the day and leaving behind some uncertainty in these candle patterns as you can see kind of three days in a row little shooting star patterns yesterday was a bit more extreme but having said that it still isn't all that bad and the reason i say that is well first off let's look at our downtrend and let's realize that we didn't um, break through that resistance as a matter of fact we kind of tested and created a little bit of a lower high there but the good news is we haven't made a new low as of yet and if we draw a line right through here we're still holding on with some hope fingers crossed that um the data coming our way will be better than expected and we can bounce and break this downtrend in the Dow. Notice we have a little bit of price support here. It's really gonna come down to what this data is, how we react to these earnings events coming up. We also have PPI, we've got retail sales. Oh my goodness, we got a plate full of um, data that could create quite a little volatility. So your guess is as good as mine as to which way we go when that number comes out, but we should be very careful and cautious and not be trying to predict this market because it is the kind of market that can hurt you instantly if you happen to guess incorrectly. Let's take a look um, at our technicals here. Our technicals continue to remain um, bearish. We, we did get back above that 20 um, SMA, but as you can see, the 34 EMA, the 50-day moving average, still bearish and underneath the 500-day. We've got a lot of work here to start improving things. If we were to take a look, whoops, if we were to take a look at our um, SPY, SPY also very, very bearish still. Um, failing at the price resistance level, continuing in the downtrend. But again, we still have that little tiny hope that we may hold on to this little upside trend, hold on to a little bit of price support in this chart. Really depends on how that data comes out. Technicals in this chart remain uh, bearish as, uh, just as we saw in that diamonds chart. And if we look at the QQQ, now QQQ really tried to get something going there um, earlier on this week, but you can see we struggled with price resistance in the chart. Um, we did, however, depending on where you draw this, we broke out of that downtrend and we may still be trying to hang on to that downtrend with a little bit of bullishness right here and we have a little bit more of a price support through that area to kind of hope it holds um, as the data rolls out and keeping in mind we still have that upside trend so if we can find bulls in here 
to uh, perk this up in here well I gotta tell you that could be the sign that we're looking for that we get some relief in the Nasdaq however if that number um, or if the data coming our way brings those bears out and we break this down um, that could be um, pretty disappointing for the market and all of the folks hoping that uh, and really trying to anticipate or predict that the bottom is in and I want to suggest to you that we still may be a long ways away from the bottom let's take a look at our um, IWM IWM also same situation our technicals remain poor we continue in this downtrend so we still have we have that little bit of a hope okay that the QQQ is going to turn around and, and pull the other three indexes up out of this mess but um, it is um, kind of wild-eyed speculation at this point because um, earnings this quarter are likely going to be very challenging, very volatile with quite a few misses. And you guys have probably seen that uh, Google has announced that they're going to be pulling back on their hiring. Microsoft has announced they're cutting what, about 1% of their labor force. We have some challenges ahead and those should be clues that some of, even some of the big techs may be struggling with this economic situation that we have going on right now. And with a Fed willing to continue to press that accelerator to fight inflation. So keeping in mind, we have this downtrend, we have a little double top, we have a failure at price resistance. And once again, that little tiny hope that we may hold on to this a little upside trend and maybe break through that resistance and it certainly is possible because we we will likely get some relief rallies in this downtrend that could make things look like it's all over and then again um, we could get those very quick reversals I want to remind you that we had that um, move right up here where everyone kind of thought hey everything's great it's all over we broke the downtrend and then boing and we just kept moving lower so keep in mind respect the downtrend respect resistance levels in the chart as long as uh, the downtrend continues to exist let's take a look at our uh, VIX now our VIX yesterday was back and forth here a little bit but ended up resolving itself to the upside here just a little bit yesterday um, recovering that trend ever so slightly holding on to price support in the chart but here again kind of in the middle of the road because we didn't really break this downtrend so it really kind of depends on how we react to some of this data over the next few days whether or not we're going to break on through uh, to that upside or if we're going to bring this right on down and bring that fear out of the market and your guess is as good as mine because we just don't know what's going to happen with this data. If we take a look at our T2122, now T2122 gut does give us a little bit of hope that we might um, be finding some lows here in the market. And that's just because we've been running these little higher lows in here and even as we push down we haven't been able to to just break it on down just yet as you can see turned up just slightly yesterday in that move but what that does show us is if those bears are inspired we still have downside room that we can move and if those bulls are inspired we've got plenty of upside room remember t2122 doesn't tell us the direction of the market all it does is tell us when we're in those reversal zones that we can expect those shifts to occur in the market and so far what we see in this chart right in here is an awful lot of uncertainty an awful lot of man we don't know what's going to happen and so we're just gyrating around in a very choppy price range if we take a look at our t2107 now t2107 sure didn't get um, a whole lot of love yesterday moving in this downtrend right here we continue in the bigger downtrend we struggled against this price resistance as you can see in the chart but the good news is is we didn't make new lows um, uh, about 16 percent of the stocks holding above their 200 day moving average suggests that we are extremely bearish but it certainly doesn't 
um, give us a whole lot of warm and fuzzy that we are essentially ready to just rip back to the upside. If we take a look at T2108, well, a lot more um, encouragement here on the T2108, the number of stocks holding above their 40 day. But if you take a look at this closely, we um, rejected some resistance in the chart. Um, breaking back down below a little bit of price support. We've got a little upside trend here that we're still trying to hold on to. Still the overall downtrend is in play, but it is a little bit more encouraging than um, um, those stocks holding above the 200 day with about 28% of the stocks holding above their 40. Let's take a look at our T2101. Now our T2101 has broken down, as you can see this trend broke down, um, but unfortunately I don't think it's giving us very good information. And the reason I say that is if we look at our economic calendar, uh, or excuse me, if we look at our index charts, um, as you can see right in here, we've been suffering from some very light volumes in here on the charts. Um, as we've been chopping and if you guys remember I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago that we could end up just in a sideways choppy consolidation um, as we wait on earnings and that looks like that played out to be true so far we'll see if we break that log jam today with the CPI or with the beginning of those um, er, uh, the earnings data so watch that closely and, and just be a little bit cautious and careful anything is possible if we take a look at our um, economic calendar for today well doggone it we have some things in here that are going to keep us on our toes first thing um, we should notice um, although our futures are trying to remain positive this morning and put on that brave face you want to pay attention to the fact that european markets are not holding up bravely uh, they're really worried about our cpi data at the moment and we've already got mortgage application data that came in negative so we continue to see that mortgage decline um, housing prices pulling back um, that doesn't that doesn't support very strong earnings from our major banks so kind of keep that in mind when we kick that off tomorrow our cpi number um, consensus estimate is suggesting that we go a little bit higher as a matter of fact ubs bank came out um, just two days ago suggesting that um, well their their prediction is we're going to see cpi at nine percent um, that could certainly bring out the bears and of course that continues to encourage the FOMC to aggressively raise rates to break that down. Now if it comes in less than that, that would be nice to see and if we start to see that the work of the FOMC is actually having a positive impact on inflation, bringing that inflation number down, then perhaps that will inspire the bulls. So keep a close eye on that. And then we've got our petroleum status number. We've got a 30 year bond auction, which may be interesting because we continue to have the inversion of the 210 um, bonds. By the way, guys, if you go to the FOMC website and you pull up uh, that inversion and look at that inversion on directly on their website, I have not been able, there's there's no data at any point in time when we have had a 210 inversion that it didn't create a recession. Not one point in history on the 210 inversion did it not predict um, a recession. Now that doesn't mean this time couldn't be the first time that that is the case, but just kind of keep that in mind. Um, we're probably headed toward that recession. So we'll want to watch that. And then keep in mind as you plan forward, um, after we get through this wild morning today, then everybody's going to start thinking about Thursday, the beginning of earnings season. The big banks out there, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, will be starting to report. And we're going to add into that jobless claims, another inflation number with PPI coming in. Um, so we still have a lot of data points coming our way that could move us substantially. So 
plan your risk very carefully. If we take a look at the earnings calendar for today, we have eight companies uh, um, that are confirmed on the earnings calendar today, but by and large, most of them are very, very um, small cap, like LOOP is um, one of those uh, uh, $4 stocks. Certainly, if you own this, that's, that's notable, but for the most part, um, uh, it's not going to make any major difference to the direction of the market. So the notables for today are only two. Uh, DAL, Delta Airlines, reporting today. Um, looks like we're getting a little bit in this. Um, let's see. Let me check here. Yeah, Delta Airlines reporting before the bell. They have already reporting reported this morning, getting a little pop and drop. Um, on that move. So keep an eye on that. This is the pre-market candle here. We're popping popping a little bit higher, struggling a little bit um, on that number. If you take a look at the other notable Fastenal, Fastenal also reporting here early this morning, and that's looking pretty bearish, missing on that number. So not the best of earnings data coming in so far. Remember, Fastenal is the company who sells the nails, the fasteners, to build houses, and it looks to me like demand is dropping pretty hard and we're falling through a floor. So that doesn't... Um, doesn't help our whole scenario on how um, these earnings um, are going to turn out this season, kind of getting off to a bad start there. Let's take a look at our um, uh, some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up, so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful and helpful, if you could please click those thumbs up buttons, leave a brief comment. Um, I would truly, truly appreciate it. That helps the channel to continue to grow. I did get a chance yesterday and went through and read all of those, but I was so busy yesterday. I didn't have time to answer all of your comments. I'll be back on the case again today. So if you guys um, uh, find these uh, videos to be useful, please do that. It helps the channel to continue to grow. And guys, please do me a favor, you know, invite your friends and other traders um, to the channel. If you find this um, information helpful, they might as well. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up. Remember that these are not recommendations to buy or, or sell securities. As a matter of fact, we're going to have to be very, very careful um, in this market with all the data coming our way and make sure every trade that you take fits your personal risk tolerance and you understand the total risk of those trades. You should never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. You need to know the why of every single trade. Let's take a look out here and see if we can see some of those stocks that may be setting up. First off, if you remember yesterday, I talked a lot about um, this pattern um, of the rounded bottom breakout. And you can see, whoops, um, stocks like Etsy breaking these downtrends, pushing up through higher lows, holding um, that price pattern in there. And I think Et Etsy continues to set up for a possible upside. Notice they're breaking through that 50 day. Notice our short term moving averages are crossing up and we're starting to see that 50 day moving average maybe turning just a little bit here on that chart. So what I would do with a chart like this is, well, it's what I always do is I place a price alert up here and I wait for the trade. I don't anticipate it, I wait for it. And if that stock were to pop up in here and hold, we've got a low risk entry on this trade. So look for those opportunities and trades like that that may have some of those upside opportunities. And, and I won't tell you that everything is bad here in the market because it's not. We're seeing quite a few of these companies like this um, starting to turn that corner and trying to come back up through some of those bottoms. Um, we've got a lot of um, a lot of stocks trying to break that 50-day moving average and turn that corner. Let's just see if the data coming our way will help support that 
or if it breaks it back down. Now, you guys know I've talked about um, UPS several times. Unfortunately, here's one of those cases where I was watching this trade. I would placed a price alert uh, right here on this pullback. It did work. We pulled and went higher, but I mentioned that the possibility we could still rest over here to the trend um, be the case, and you can notice that pulled back pretty hard yesterday all of a sudden and we're running into some trouble here on UPS. Watch that closely if it can continue to hold this trend and get right back through that down um, that alert area and hold the, another higher low then we may have that opportunity that that could still turn out for an upside trade. I mentioned Rivian um, yesterday and I do think Rivian is one of those we should be paying attention to. Rivian breaking that 50-day moving average, holding that higher low, that nice little resting pullback occurring in here, if that can continue to hold. Now, if I draw this trend, notice that this, you have to be patient. Discipline is going to be very, very important in this market. And following a set of rules, following the trend, we want to watch this carefully in here to see if that has to rest over here to trend, let it occur, let it happen. If it has to pull back to, to make that um, happen, let that happen, wait for the trade, and let's see if we can hold some of those higher lows here in the chart. Other places I think um, would be a good place to be watching. Take a look at what's been happening here in utilities. Now utilities are one of those areas, it's, it's something we're always going to need. Even if we go into recession, utilities may be that safe harbor or somewhat of a safe harbor. Now, when I say that, I'm not suggesting that this rips to the upside. Um, utilities are not known for just taking off and running really, really hard to the upside. But what it may do is be that protection play where you can pick up some of the utilities that are holding bullish patterns, holding these higher lows, may push through that 50-day moving average. And you buy those with dividends in mind in that just kind of a safe place to be. Another place you may want to look into is into the healthcare um, area of the market. Healthcare has been showing lots of bullishness um, here recently, and you can take a look at XLV. XLV pushing up through that 50 day moving average. Notice that we're pulling back to try and hold that area as support. Keep an eye on that. We've broken the downtrend in the chart. Healthcare is another one of those places. If we're going into recession, as the 210 inversion suggests, healthcare is something we're definitely going to need. And with the rise that we're beginning to see in COVID again, and some of those concerns out there about the fall and winter starting to come into play, this could be um, another one of those places for a safe haven. If you take a look at stocks like um, um, MKC, oops, excuse me, MCK, MCK Mickelson here in that healthcare sector, trying to break through some all time highs, and we're holding these bullish patterns in here. So watch that carefully to see if that can push on through. Stocks like UNH holding up, nice bullish pattern, breaking the downtrend up through the 50, holding the higher lows. <laughs> Watch for those next opportunities for those to maybe push on through. Those may be some places to look if the market does start to slip into recession. Today, guys, anything is possible. As we bring out these numbers on CPI and we begin those earnings reports, just keep in mind there's likely going to be very much um, uh, challenging price action, very volatile, big swings. We should probably start to expect big intraday whipsaws and overnight reversals. So plan your risk carefully. Try to avoid the gambling and get caught up in the hype. Make sure you're being very patient. Make sure you're being very disciplined because this is the kind of market that can just gut your account really, really fast. Be safe, be careful, have a great day. I'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning for the beginning of the third quarter earnings season. Y'all take care, everyone.